Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For our devotions on this day of December the 4th, the commemoration of John of Damascus, theologian and hymn writer, we shall follow the order of daily prayer for noon on page 296 of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. John of Damascus was born around 675 AD, where his Christian father served in the court of the Muslim Caliph Abdul Malik. During his youth, he was instructed in the Christian faith by a captured Italian monk and also received education in the fields of geometry, literature, logic, and rhetoric from Muslim teachers. He succeeded his father as the chief financial officer to the Muslim caliph, but gave up that position in 716 to devote himself to the Christian faith, and so entered a monastery outside of Jerusalem, where he would eventually be ordained as a priest and where he would die on this day of December the 4th, around 756 AD. And John was a prolific writer. His greatest work, called The Fountain of Wisdom, which was divided into three parts. In the lengthy third section, an exact exposition of the Orthodox faith, was a massive compendium of, from early church fathers covering nearly every conceivable doctrinal topic. The first Christian work of what is called systematic theology, and which left a lasting stamp on both the Eastern and the Western churches, and which was the precursor, as it were, of systematic theological writings of our evangelical Lutheran church, such as Philip Melanchthon's Commonplaces, Martin Chemnitz's Theological Places, Heinrich Schmidt's The Doctrinal Theology of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, Charles Porterfield Krauss' The Conservative Reformation and Its Theology, 
and Franz Pieper's Christian Dogmatics. And as we are now in the season of Advent, preparing to celebrate Christmas in the incarnation and birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what John of Damascus writes in this section concerning that blessed event. What greater thing is there than that God should become man, and the Word became flesh without being changed of the Holy Spirit, and Mary the Holy and ever-Virgin One, the Mother of God? And he acts as a mediator between God and man, conceived in the virgin's chaste womb without will or desire or any connection with man, but through the Holy Spirit. And he who is like us becomes obedient to the Father and finds a remedy for our disobedience in what he has, has assumed from us, and without which it is not possible to obtain salvation. And the second section of John's work is entitled Concerning Heresy and constitutes the first Christian refutation of Islam. His defense of the Christian faith over against Islam would later find similar expression in the Augsburg Confession of our Lutheran Church, where Islam is listed as a heresy in connection with the very first article of the Christian faith, the nature and person of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In addition, Islam is grouped together with the papacy and enthusiasts or modern-day Pentecostals or Charismatics who claim to receive the Holy Spirit without and apart from the outward objective Word of God. And so the small article called Articles put it, Enthusiasm is the origin, power, and strength of all heresy especially of that of the papacy and Muhammad. It is, however, in connection with icons or images that John of Damascus is most well known. When the Byzantine or Eastern Roman emperor issued a decree forbidding the use of images or icons in Christian churches, John responded by issuing three apologetic treatises against those decrying the holy images pointing out that just as the Word became flesh and the disciples beheld his glory, so icons or images can be proper and beneficial aids for Christians in their worship and devotion. And so he says, In former times, God, who is without form or body, could never be depicted. But now, when God is seen in the flesh and conversing with men, I make an image of the God whom I see. I do not worship matter. I worship the creator of matter who became matter for my sake, who willed to take his abode in matter, who worked out my salvation through matter. Never will I cease honoring the matter which wrought my salvation. Because of this, I regard all remaining matter with reverence, because God has filled it with his grace and power. Through it, my salvation has come to me. Was not, after all, the wood of the cross of Christ matter? Was not the holy and exalted mountain of Calvary matter? What of the life-bearing rock, the holy and life-giving tomb, the fountain of our resurrection? Was it not matter? Is not the ink of the most holy gospel book matter? From it we receive the bread of life. And over and above all these things, is not the body and blood of our Lord matter? Either do away with the honor and veneration of these things, or accept the tradition of the church and the veneration of images. Reverence God and follow the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Do not despise matter. It is not despicable, for God has made nothing despicable. And in the early days of the Reformation, this same issue arose when radical reformers began destroying images of saints and apostles, crucifixes, stained glass windows, and other works of art in churches. To which Martin Luther, reflecting as it were the old adage, a picture is worth a thousand words, replied, it is possible for me to hear and bear in mind the story of the passion of our Lord 
but it is impossible for me to hear it and bear it in mind without forming a mental image of it in my heart. For whether I will it or not, when I hear of Christ, an image of a man hanging on a cross takes form in my heart, just as the reflection of my face naturally appears in water when I look into it. If it is not a sin but good to have the image of Christ in my heart, why should it be a sin to have it before my eyes? Now, in addition, John also sought to picture in music and in poetry the Word who became flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, and what is probably his most lasting legacy to the church today. Our Lutheran service book contains two of his Easter hymns, number 478, The Day of Resurrection, and 487, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain, and in which he emphasizes that the day of Christ's birth points to the day of his resurrection. And while we might try to explain the wonder of our Lord's incarnation and birth, his crucifixion and his resurrection, in the end, the best that we can do is like John of Damascus of old, simply wonder at the wonder of it all. Stand in awe of it, and then sing it in the hymns of the hymn written by Germanus, a contemporary of John. A great and mighty wonder, a full and holy cure. The virgin bears the infant with virgin honor pure. Since all he comes to ransom, by all be he adored. The infant born in Bethlehem, the Savior and the Lord. Amen. We begin our prayers with the Kyrie. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, through your servant John of Damascus, you proclaim with power the mysteries of the true faith. Confirm our faith, so that we may confess Jesus to be true God and true man, sending the praise of the risen Lord, so that by the power of the resurrection we may also attain the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be with your servants who make art and music for your people, that with joy we on earth may glimpse your beauty. Bring us to the fulfillment of that hope of perfection that will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.